Chaplin quite rightly didn't trust me to really cook up emotion on the go. I was very inexperienced young actress. I was certainly very emotional, but um, he was determined to get the best out of me. So uh, he played a trick on me. It was the only one he did during the film, and uh, it was worth it. Um, he asked me to come into his trailer, and he said, let's just go over the words for the scene. I don't want any emotion. <laughs> it was really wicked. I don't want any emotion. I don't want anything. Just say the words. So I said the words, and he said, well, what is that? <laughs> I mean, you can't do it like that. I, of course, started to cry. He pushed me onto the set. We did the scene. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Very naughty, but I thank him for it, wherever you are, Charlie. But I gathered that um, it's, he, he'd adored his mother, that he had brought her over from England, that by that time she was mentally very unstable. Uh, but that in some way, I think the part that I played, Teresa, was an amalgam of his mother and of his wife, Una. And the clothes he wanted me to wear were very specific. He would say, my mother had a shawl, my mother wore a shawl like that. Or my mother had a jacket like that. And I realized that he was recreating his mother in me, um, which was very touching. I have nothing more to say about it. That, that's a fact that... Um, his mother, because the girl is, is so wounded in the first part of the film, and he brings her back to life, I think that's what he would very much like to have been able to do, but alas, could not with his mother. I always remember Una when she was uh, asked in her, or Chaplin's later years, in her middle years, about their marriage, and she said, well, when I was young, he took care of me, and now I take care of him. And I think that's very much the story of limelight and of youth and age uh, coming together, the impossibility really of it being complete because it's so clear that one of them is going to die <laughs> well before the other and that the young girl has a life with this young man too. Um, but. It was it was certainly a, a salute to Una, and, and quite honestly, I think one of the reasons I got it was that I looked so like Una at that time that we were often uh, mistaken for each other. It was a very altogether a very strange. I mean, if I believed in fate, and I suppose I do, uh, it was absolutely fated that that I that I played it. I mean, he was a genius, and it's very clear that he was in the film. And also, I think Norman will agree, the film is very much so personal to Charlie uh, that uh, you will feel closer to him. And maybe that is why young people like it, and I'm very glad they do. I think it's wonderful that they do. Uh, you will feel closer to Charlie, the man, seeing this film than in uh, any of the other films where he plays a character magnificently, but it's, this is different. This is him. This film, this great, great masterpiece, which you'll see tonight, was uh, the McCarthy era, era and uh, J. Edgar Hoover, etc. tried to stifle this great film, did not allow it to be shown in many, many cities. I think here, I think Los Angeles was one. It was shown quite late here. I just want to remind you that it's the 60th anniversary of this great masterpiece, and nobody was able to stifle Chaplin. You know. Yeah. Good. Good. Good.